Hi there Star Wars Collectors and welcome to another Bosk's Bounty video and in this video myself and my son are once again going to be opening up some older Star Wars figures and taking a look at them. So in front of you here we have Moff Jerjerod, I think that's pronounced. Somebody in the comment section below will surely correct me on that if I got that wrong but we've got other figures to open as well. We've got another one from the Saga collection, we've got one from the Saga series, we've got a legacy collection figure, a complete mix of figures once again and little Bosk is with me today so do you want to say hello? Hi. Here he is. All right then guys so if you do happen to like the video don't forget to drop a like down below. I love doing these videos with my son. We get to enjoy these figures, checking out some of the older figures from the line. And we'll start with Moff Jerjerod. All right, let's have a quick look at the packaging first of all. So of course, this is the Saga collection from what, 2006, I believe this was. This line came out. You always got these little things, little statues there, hologram figures. And this one, of course, is from episode six, Return of the Jedi, as you can see in the top left-hand corner there. I love the bubble on these, really big bubble, and you always get that movie scene behind. So you can see all of the stormtroopers and everything lined up waiting for Vader and obviously for the Emperor when he turns up to the uh, second Death Star. So there you go, that's the packaging. Let's get this figure open and then we can talk about the uh, officer and what that means for the vintage collection as well. All right then, so here he is out of the packaging and Little Boss wants to say something particular about this figure. We haven't had an Imperial officer in this scale for a pretty long time, so they need to release one in the Vintage Collection. Yeah, and that's something I completely agree with. I feel that we need a brand new uh, Imperial officer sculpt, which they could use many times for lots of different figures, even perhaps an Admiral Thrawn, for example. But definitely this guy, the guy that meets Vader and the Emperor in Return of the Jedi and of course you've got others like Admiral Piet as well. We need lots of them and I think the last decent one we got was probably Captain Nida in the Legacy Collection. I think that's a pretty good figure. That's definitely one that I'm on the lookout for anyway but I wanted this guy because of course as you will know we have recently had the reissue of the Emperor's Royal Guard and the Emperor is coming out soon in the throne room pack for PulseCon this year. And no doubt he'll be coming out single carded as well. So with those two figures, you need this guy really, um, really good officer. This particular one it is dated. He does only have the swivel elbows here, as you can see. But in terms of the, the overall sculpt, he looks decent enough. And uh, I'll leave it to you to decide whether that head sculpt is accurate to the guy from the film. But yeah. 2006 is a long time ago things have moved on and I'm sure they could do a much better job with this figure now but as I say it's good enough for now to go into the collection to go with the Emperor and the Emperor's Royal Guards. All right then so next up we have a figure from the Legacy Collection this is the cancelled line of Legacy Collection that came out in about 2013 it's the Builder Droid series and I've pretty much got all of these I, I was going to keep them carded but I don't think there's really much point especially as the bubbles on these they're very brittle and this one is actually cracked so I'm going to open this one and take a look at the R2 unit inside it's a decent R2 pretty sure that it is the one that they repacked into the following black series 3.75 inch on those orange cards I think it's exactly the same R2-D2 but it is based on the attack of the clones and you also get the build a droid piece in there which I'm hoping to complete so here's the packaging for you it's got the uh, R2-D2 packaging there and there's a picture of the builder droid on the back droid factory collect all six parts to build him and I've definitely done the 212 clone trooper and I've still got him to open as well I may have even done the battle droid as well I can't remember but uh, those will be coming up in future videos but let's open this R2-D2 and check him out very quickly here is the droid arm this is his left arm so yeah you get that included and it'd be nice to complete that droid. All right then, so here is R2-D2 out of the packaging and I've got to say it is a really good R2-D2 and I'm pretty sure that it is the one that was repacked into the Black Series and Little Boss, what do you think? I think this should have been the one that was on the Star Wars card instead of the dirty one. I totally agree with that. I wish that the R2-D2 that came out in the Vintage Collection was a cleaner version instead of that dirty one. Uh, it's supposed to sort of mimic the after effects of the Battle of Yavin where he gets shot by the TIE fighter 
but I would have preferred it if they'd used this R2-D2 instead of that dirty one because it, you know, it looks more like the vintage version uh, to keep it true to that vintage style. Especially as it came on a vintage card, it would have been nice if it matched the card back. But this sculpt of R2-D2 is a really good one as well and it does have the added bonus of the extra leg that when you turn the head, it comes out like that. And of course you've got the articulated feet and everything. And I think that's a really nice touch. And there he is, and obviously he wheels around, which is pretty cool. So as we mentioned before, he is based on the R2-D2 from Attack of the Clones, and you can tell that by the extra pieces, accessories that he was included with. So what have we got there? The rockets. The rockets, yep, yeah, they're pretty cool. So they just fit on the side there, like, how do they go in like that? There you go, like that. And this one. And obviously that's the first time we saw him use that. So it's it's good to have it included. But if you don't want them on and you want him to be just a standard R2-D2 from A New Hope or whatever. And I'm going to use him for exactly that. I'm going to use him for my Tanti 4 playset. Um, and the next figure up that we're going to be looking at is going to accompany him in that playset. But this is a good R2-D2 for that set. All right, so next up we have another Saga Collection figure and this one again is from episode 6 return of the jedi and we have c-3po in the ewok throne now my son wants the ewok throne because these are his ewoks here and he does have a bit of a endor setup going on but i want that c-3po out of there to go with the r2d2 that i just showed you because this apparently is the best c-3po that we've we've got really he's shiny vac metalized so he's a really good c-3po he's got all the articulation you're going to need and he's in proportion as well. So let's take a quick look at the packaging once again. So once again, Saga Collection, you can see the Endor Forest scene just behind him there. Little picture of C-3PO on the package. There's some of the previous figures that you could get and there's a picture of the figure out of the packaging. And once again, you get the hologram figure. So we're just gonna open this straight up. Right there is the one that we just opened up. It is, yeah, Moff Jergerod. I've had to say it again, so that's great, but yeah. Previous figures all on the back and there's the front of it again. Really nice card backs these one, but you know, I don't really keep anything in the packaging unless it's the vintage collection. So I need this guy from a Tanti 4, so let's open him up. All right then, so here he is out of the packaging with his Ewok friends and I'm getting quite attached to this chair. I kind of want to keep the chair for myself, but my son has made it perfectly clear that he wants the chair, which is fine with me, but well, let's take a look at the C-3PO just now. Let's take him out, get the Ewoks out of the way. And we'll take a quick look at the chair, actually. You have to build the chair. It all sort of slots in and everything, but it's a really good chair. Fantastic looking chair there for C-3PO in the Endor Ewok Village. I really do like that. Now, the Saga Collection wasn't the only way that you could get this C-3PO. I do believe that he was repacked in the Legacy Collection. I think you can get him in the sort of Clone Wars packaging. And then also in the Saga Legends line as well. But I think this one is definitely the cheapest way of getting him in that Saga collection packaging. Um, and it just shows you that, um, you know, the day and age that we live in at the moment isn't just a repack way. They've always done it. They've always put older figures in newer, newer packaging and repack them and stuff. But he is brilliant. Look at him shining away in the light. Really, really good. So let's take a look at the C3PO himself. He is fully articulated. He's got the knee joints. And his leg joints there now the arms are pretty much like the builder droid ones they they pop out like so and the head you get a bit of motion there and he does have motion on his waist there so you can see all of the wires and stuff inside now little boss did want to compare him against the c3po that he has this is the c3po that came in the 30th anniversary with the green goop on him yeah, and who else did he... He came with Salacious, did he? Yeah. Yeah, so Salacious was like eating his eyes. You can just... If you just turn him there, you can just see the eye sticking out there. But we wanted to compare these, didn't we, little boss? Because we wanted to see if they've used... And it looks to me like that they have used pretty much the same figure. But unfortunately, this guy, even though he came out later than this C-3PO, he can't bend his legs, which I find bizarre, really. But apart from that, it's pretty much exactly the same... C-3PO. I actually do prefer the colour of this one. Slightly less bright gold. This one's probably not so accurate, but 
it's still a great C3PO. And if we just bring in the R2D2 that we just pulled out, there you go, there they are together. They're going to look fantastic. I mean, they would look good in the Yavin scene with all the uh, Yavin ceremony, which we've got another figure actually to open from that scene. He's going to come up next. Um, but you could just imagine him with Leia ceremony, Han ceremony, and obviously the Luke Skywalker, and they'd look pretty good. But I'm going to use these in my uh, Tanti 4 playset. All right, I mentioned that the next figure was going to be from the Yavin ceremony, and it is General Jan Dodona, or Jan Dodona. Again, my pronunciation is probably off. Let me know in the comment section below if I've got that completely wrong. This guy's from the Saga series. This line was full of figures which had very limited articulation, but often they came with some decent accessories. So this one's no different. He comes with lots of accessories. And let's just have a quick look at the card back. There he is with some of the other figures. Who have you got on there, Little Boss? Have you got any of those? I have got the... Rapatuni. Yeah, I've got the frog. <laughs> the frog. And... and we've opened up captain antilles we have yeah we have opened him up before again for the tantive four playset so this video has got a bit of a theme going on about it some of these figures i've had for a while in my collection others i've you know bought specifically because of new sets that have come out and we're yet to get those figures in the vintage collection and it just seemed right to complete those scenes but let's open this guy up and take a look at the figure. Okay then, so here he is out of the packaging and there's not really too much to say about the figure overall. He doesn't really do a lot. He's got swivel elbows, all that kind of jazz. It's more about how he looks in terms of the scene, I guess, and the head sculpt and paintwork isn't too bad. And you can see he's holding one of the medals there. He does come with this blaster, which doesn't really fit in either hand, to be honest. So not 100% sure why they've included that, but it's there anyway. And, uh, Little Boss, what were you going to say about the accessories that he comes with? He comes with three medals, but he only awards two to ha Han Solo and Luke. He does, yeah. So who's the third one for then? Chewie, probably. <laughs> yeah, Chewie. Everyone always said, you know, why didn't Chewie get a medal? And I think there's something to do with like Wookiees not accepting awards or something like that. But of course, we know eventually he got one, didn't he, in... Uh, in the rise of skywalker but there's the other two medals and yeah this figure's going to go great in the yavin ceremony with the uh, the other the other figures that i've got from the vintage collection all three have been released in the vintage collection and obviously you've got chewy r2 and c3po that you can put with them as well so complete that scene and there you go that is general Yan Dodona. All right then, so here's the last figure that we are going to be looking at today. This is a Star Wars Legacy Collection Saga Legends. So this will be a repack of some description. It's not part of the Builder Droid line or anything like that. It's just this sort of like ran alongside the uh, Legacy Collection, but this is the Saga Legends character. So this is Saisi Tin. Really, again, the Star Wars names, why do they make them so difficult to pronounce? If you haven't heard it, you don't really know and you've just got to kind of guess. So here he is in the packaging. Um, little Bosk, you wanted to say something about this packaging, did you not? Yeah, um, I wonder what this bit is here. That looks to me, I think it's supposed to resemble like a locker of some description. It does say it includes battle gear here. So maybe there's some extra pieces in there for you to open. You, as you can see, the packaging on this one's absolutely battered, but that's fine. We're going to open this one and... Uh, Little Boss collects sort of Jedis for uh, his Attack of the Clones, Stroke Revenge of the Sith era. So this one's going to go very nicely in his collection. He's going to have this figure. And um, this guy, was he one of the ones that was went up against the Chancellor and got taken down? Yes, he was taken down by the Emperor like a chump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did go down like a chump. They all did, didn't they? Um, some people say that the Emperor's all powerful and everything and he would have done them anyway, but he probably would. But, you know, they went down really easily, didn't they, in that scene, in my opinion, anyway. And uh, there's a little bit about him here. Uh, Tin stands with Mace Windu as they attempt to arrest the Chancellor and obviously they failed with that. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's open him up and check out the figure. All right, so here's the locker piece here. Uh, I think it's supposed to resemble a locker. And let's see if we can open this up, see what's inside. Yeah, and it's your, your classic weapons pack there. Seems to get the same ones pretty much most of the time. That looks like a battle droids blaster. Got this heavy blaster here. You've got this one here. 
that looks like your clone sort of blaster that would come maybe with a um, galactic marine and your clones and stuff little blaster there and another clone clone blaster there so there you go some extra blasters for your figures which is always handy i found something on this figure that's a little bit weird right he's got a lightsaber hole but there isn't a lightsaber with no blade so there's definitely not one in the packaging no yeah it doesn't seem like it did came with an unlit saber just the hilt so that is a bit weird maybe the previous figure of this did but this one certainly doesn't you only get that one that was lit let's just see if the blade comes out of the saber let's try that and it doesn't so unless i'm going to break it and there doesn't even seem to be a little clip on there either but yeah that's uh, well spotted that he does have a little hole there for a saber but nothing can go in it this figure is uh, quite dated, it's got to be said. It doesn't have any ankle articulation whatsoever, which is a shame. He has swivel elbows, which again is a shame. But the head sculpt's pretty good. The cloak's not too bad. He has soft goods on the bottom there. So all in all, he looks pretty good. And I think Little Bosk is going to be pretty happy to have this one in his collection to go with all his other Jedi. So what do you think? Good? Yeah. All right. All right then guys, that's it for us today. We've been opening some older figures for you. We do these videos every now and then. We love doing these videos, checking out some older figures. So yeah, thank you all very much for watching. And we'll see you on the next one.